Okay, now suppose object is thrown with some velocity v, making angle 45, it's making a projectile, and this is the trajectory of the projectile, and its kinetic energy total initially represented by the letter E, so E is equal to half mb square at the start. The question is, what is the kinetic energy at the top? So in projectile, at the top, Kinetic energy is only due to its x component of the velocity, vx, because the vy component becomes zero. So this is vy component. This is vx component. And the vx component remains same. So the object has vx component. So kinetic energy is equal to half m vx square, one by two m vx square at the top, and Vx is equal to V cos theta, mean V times cos 45, and the cos 45 times V, this is 0 0.07, so V square cos 45 square, it becomes half mv square into 0.5, and this half mv square is the total energy at the start. It mean the kinetic energy at the top of the projectile motion will be 0.5 E, if the angle is 45. Next. Now look at this. If this is a container, it is containing some liquid. The total mass is M. The total depth is H. When it is connected with other empty container on opening the valve, so liquid is transferred to this one. It means half mass here, half mass here. So this is m by two and the remaining mass here. So both are now at the same level. The question is calculate the last of potential energy in the container A. So look, initially it has energy, gravitational potential energy, mgh, but later half mass is transferred and half height is lost. So the new potential energy or the lost potential energy, mgh, m divided by two, h divided by two. So one by four of the initial potential energy is lost by the container liquid. Mass half, height half, that's why one by four of the potential energy is lost. Next question. This is a slope. And the object is of mass M is being pulled by the force F with the velocity V. After covering distance S, it reaches the top. And this inclined surface making angle alpha with the horizontal line. The question is, what is the efficiency? Look. The output energy gained by the object at the top at this point is the potential energy. So efficiency is equal to output energy over the input energy. The output energy is the MGH at the top and the input energy is the work done. And the work is F into D, this distance covered. So F into S, this is the distance covered. Now, this S is labeled. For the MGH, we have to take this vertical height gained. So when we will consider this as a triangle, so perpendicular over hypotenuse is equal to sine theta, I mean sine alpha. So H perpendicular over hypotenuse is equal to sine alpha. So the height can be written as S sine alpha. So mg and h can be written as s sine alpha divided by f into s, s cancel. So this will be the expression. This is one of the MCQ. mg sine theta divided by f. This is the efficiency. Now look. We have to draw the energy against time graph and we assume that 
that air resistance is negligible. There's no air or air resistance is negligible. Initially at the height, the potential energy is maximum. And when it is dropped, its potential energy is decreasing. And the rate of decrease is not constant. Reason, because it's gaining speed. It is accelerating. There is an acceleration due to gravity. So speed is increasing. So the gradient of the graph is increasing because the rate of change of energy is increasing due to high speed. This is a curve. And then kinetic energy, when the potential energy is maximum at the height, the object still at rest, we will start this kinetic energy from the zero. And then gradually it's increasing because the speed is increasing non-uniformly due to the acceleration. So the final gain of the kinetic energy mean kinetic energy gain before hitting the ground is exactly equal to the energy, potential energy at the top. I mean, whole of the gravitational potential energy is converted into kinetic energy at the bottom because due to zero air resistance, negligible resistance, there is no loss. So 100% gravitational potential energy at the top is converted into kinetic energy. But if air resistance is considered, then the potential energy at the top is maximum. It is decreasing with increasing rate because the speed is increasing until the terminal velocity is gained. But some of the energy is lost as heat due to air resistance. So the potential energy, which is decreasing, is converting itself into kinetic energy plus some heat energy. So there is a gain of the kinetic energy. So initially the kinetic energy is zero at the top. It is increasing, but the finally, the amount of the energy gained, amount of the kinetic energy gained before hitting the ground is not equal to the initial potential energy because some is lost. So we have to stop the increase of the kinetic energy at the low level of the potential energy. So this gap, this one, is actually showing the loss of the energy as heat. So potential energy is maximum. Kinetic energy gained is minimum and the difference of gravitational potential energy at the top minus the kinetic energy gained at the bottom is the loss of energy as heat. So this vertical line, this gap will give you the loss of energy as heat. Now the next, power, important, power is a scalar and it is defined as work done per unit time. The power is work divided by time, W divided by T, W Meyer in joule, time in seconds, so joules per second, and the joules per second equal to watt. So the power will be one watt. If one joule work is done in one second, now work scalar, time scalar, power scalar. And power can also be written as F dot D for the work divided by time. But this portion, distance divided by time is speed. So the formula is power force times speed. The work divided by time, then it's converted into force into speed. So this is the formula, new formula for the power. Now, if the object is falling down, the power formula is F dot V, which force is bringing it down? It's weight. 
So instead of the F, we will write the Mg and then speed. So the power of the falling object is MGV. M is the mass, G is acceleration due gravity and the V is the speed. But when the object is rolling down the slope, then whole weight is not bringing it down. We have done in the components of the forces that the component of the weight acting down the slope is WY, not the W, not the WX. So the power force times speed. So the force which bringing it down is WY component into speed and WY is W sine theta into speed W is mg, so we will write the formula mgv sine theta. For the falling object, mgv, and for the object rolling down the slope is mgv sine theta. But you can use any formula. Power is equal to energy divided by time, work divided by time. For the numericals, energy can be kinetic energy, it can be potential energy, it can be heat energy, any energy divided by time is power. Now, come to very, very important. Suppose this is any turbine. Like a pedestal fan. And its blades are sweeping area A. And here is a barrier. It can be a glass barrier, it can be a straight wall, vertical wall, or any screen. Now, the distance of this wind source, this fan, this turbine from the barrier is L. And the density of the air is rho. If the question is, Determine the formula for the mass of the air between the source of the wind and the barrier, this one. So look, density is mass over volume. So the mass is density multiplied by volume, density, and the volume is area into height. So the area of the blades multiplied by its distance from the wall. So rho AL is the mass of the air occupied by this space. Now, when this fan is switched on, it is throwing air towards the barrier. We can determine the speed and the instrument which measure the speed of the wind is called anemometer. By placing anemometer somewhere here, we can measure the speed of the wind. And then look, the speed, the velocity, multiplied by mass, mass times velocity is the momentum. So this air is colliding the barrier with momentum P initial, which is MV. M is determined rho L, L and the speed is determined by the anemometer. But after collision, the molecules are not returning back to the source. So there is no change. Uh, so, so, uh, there is no linear momentum after collision. Mean they have linear momentum before collision. They are not returning back. They are not bouncing back towards the source. So the initial momentum is P, but the final linear momentum will be nothing, zero. Because the air particles are going either up or down, they are not coming back to the source. So the final momentum is zero. So there is a change of the momentum. So the change of the momentum is MV minus zero. And the change of the momentum, M is rho al into v minus zero. So this rho al v is the change of the momentum of the air. According to Newton's second law, rate of change of momentum is an unbalanced force. 
and it is equal to f is equal to change of momentum divided by time and the change of momentum is rho a l divided by time but the l divided by t this l and this t l divided by t is the speed so we can write rho a v l divided by t so rho a v into v mean the force exerted by the air force exerted by the wind on the barrier is rho a v square this is the force exerted when it is plotted this v square and f are the graphs of v square at the x-axis force at the y-axis is straight line passing to the region and the gradient of the graph will be the density into area, density of the air and area of the wind source. But when the speed plotted at the x-axis and the force at the y-axis, then it's a curve with increasing gradient. And now the gradient is equal to rho a v because f is equal to rho a v into v. So this v at the x-axis, the other v part of the gradient, so rho a v. Now, when force is exerted on the object, wall is not moving, barrier is not moving. So no work is done because there is no motion in the barrier. But the force is exerted. So force is causing the pressure at the wall and the pressure exerted is equal to force divided by area. And the force we have done is rho a v square divided by area area cancels so this is the formula for the pressure pressure is equal to rho v square now when v square plotted at the x-axis pressure at the y-axis is straight line passing through the region and the gradient is the density of the air if the v alone plotted and the pressure here it's a curve increasing gradient and now the gradient will be density multiplied by speed Next, pressure is exerted, force is exerted, so definitely there will be a power. There is a power which is developed in the air, it is exerting the pressure. So how much power is developed in the air before hitting the wall? So the power is equal to force times speed, force is rho a v square, and the speed is v, so rho a v cube. So this is the power. So do remember, F force is equal to rho a v square. Pressure is equal to rho v square, but the power P is equal to rho a v cube. So this is the theory for the work energy and power.